Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, the, the, the beautiful thing in church is, even if we are only three, God will do what he says he will do. You know, the Bible says, and in the night, Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly, I said suddenly, the Bible says that there was what? A shaking. And all the doors of the prison were open. The foundation was shaken to the door. How were two or three are gathered? The Lord is there. Today the Lord will fill your cup and it will overflow. Let's pray together. Father, we bless you for this Sunday, the second of the year. What a beautiful day it is. Every day is a gift, and so we celebrate it. Thank you for bringing us today. Thank you for the teaching so far. And thank you even much more you're about to do. We pray, enlarge our understanding. We pray, open our eyes. We pray, give us knowledge of what you want us to possess. And above all, empower us to do exploits in Jesus' name. This will be our best year ever. And greater ones will follow thereafter. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank God you are here. Every day is a blessing. And today is your blessing. Because when you are in God, you can only get better and better. If you read the Bible, there are things the Bible uses. It uses words like more and more. You get stronger and stronger. From grace to grace. From glory to glory. You see that every time the Bible is always telling his children, or the Lord wants his children, if we were like this last year, we will go higher. Amen? Amen? See, there is something I want us to learn. We should not always bemoan that 2020 to be better. No, for us, every year will be better. Because we can only get brighter and brighter. Happier and happier. Will there be challenges? Yes. Will there be difficulties? It is part of life. Amen? They are part of life. Because sometimes the danger is we preach bread and butter Christianity. That everything will be cool. You know that thing? Cool. There is no... No! If things were going to be cool, Jesus wouldn't tell his disciples, tarry until you be endued with power from on high. He knew that if they are going out, they are going to face challenges. But you don't need to be worried. Get their power you will overcome. Amen. So this year we are looking at a year of spiritual reproduction. And it is not going to come by wishful thinking. Things don't change because we want them to change. Things only change because we do something about them. Amen. And your life is not going to get better because pastors say so. No. Because that's what they have been saying since time immemorial. Your life gets better when you wake up and do something about it. Because the promises of God, they are always yes and amen. But they don't get fulfilled until we wake up and pick those promises and act on them. So, this morning, I want to encourage you to personal investment for spiritual growth. Invest in your life so that you can grow. What did I say? I know for most of us, it's almost like a custom or a culture. People always have to help us. But I want you to know, yes, every human being needs help. That's the way God made us. I need help. You need help. Nobody is independent. But I want you to understand, don't be perpetually dependent. The little you can do, do it. And God will add the rest. 
So if we are going to get the best for this year, irrespective of all the promises, if we don't work on them, they will only remain promises. But I want to move from a promise to a fulfillment. And that is my prayer for you this year. That God's promises in the Bible will begin to be fulfilled in your life. And then we can also say, like Jesus said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your life. That's why we come to church. To know the mind of God. And we will do it. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 3, I look at verse number 18. It is going to be a wonderful year. Because our God has given us all that we need to succeed. And I'm ready for success. And I hope you are also ready. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter number 3. I look at verse number 18. 2 Peter 3, 18. Let's echo it together. One to go. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. And the church says, Amen. But grow. There may be several things happening in life, but. There may be several situations, but. There may be many reasons why we came to church. There may be several things we are looking for. There may be aspirations we be looking up to God for. Besides all this, but grow in grace. It's not an option. I have to do it. And you have to do it. But grow. What do we grow in? Grow in grace and in knowledge. Do you know that the world is not for those who are strong? It is now moving to a world of knowledge. That if we are ignorant, people will manipulate us. If you are ignorant, people will make you live what is called sensational Christianity. Christianity based on senses and feelings, but not based on the scripture. That's why God doesn't want us to be ignorant Christians. Hey, sister, brother, look here. This Bible is not just a decoration. It's for us to read it so that we will know things for ourselves. Those early days where it was only the priest that would read the Bible and only the priest that would interpret it, and whether you agree with it or not, that's your problem. Those days are over. I said those days are over. Why? Because in our dispensation, God has given his spirit not only to the pastor, not only to the workers. God has given his spirit to who? To everyone who believes. To everyone who is connected. The spirit of God is for all. And so if God's spirit speaks to the pastor, that same spirit can talk to you. We have to move away from the era where people are only telling we are prophets. And when we prophesy, nobody should challenge. No, 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 no. no. If you prophesy and it is contrary to the Bible, it is not a prophecy. Because God cannot contradict himself. And the only way we will know that those prophecies are not true, it is when we grow in grace and in knowledge. Because you can always deceive an ignorant person. If I go to my remote village and the people have not seen euro before, they will not know the difference between a fake euro and an original euro because they have not seen one before. So if I give to them the fake one, I say, these are euros. They are used in Europe. They will believe it. Why? Because they have no knowledge. Because they are ignorant. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of of knowledge. So this morning, what am I tell, telling you? What I'm telling you is that grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Growth is a commandment. Grow. It means we have to invest in it. If you do it, you will reap it. Amen. Amen. If we don't, we will also reap. But the good thing is that when you start growing, you become mature. And maturity is required in your life here.
to please God and to reproduce. Let's put it this way. If you see this tree, this picture I have shown here, if you see the tree, it is so small. Now, when you plant it, it is a baby tree. But if that tree is going to reproduce or it's going to produce something, it has to do what? It has to grow. It has to mature. And then it begins to bear fruit. But if that tree doesn't grow, it can never reproduce. So when we are talking about spiritual reproduction, you can only reproduce spiritually if you have grown spiritually. Look at knowledge. You can only reproduce the knowledge you have. If you don't have it, you cannot reproduce it. So church, we are on a growing course. Amen. And today I want you to focus on yourself. Personal investment for spiritual growth. Why do we need this spiritual growth? Why should we invest in this spiritual? What are the elements? So the first thing I want to say... The need for it. You need it. And I need it. And the question is, what areas, what elements, where should we focus our growth on? The first one is, why do we need the growth? Two things. The first reason is that we need growth so that we'll be able to stand what? Firm. When the tree has grown, you see it is solid. It is stable. Why? Because it has roots. There is one root that goes very, very low and deep. What is the name of that root? They call it the tap root. It goes down. And, it, and before you can bring a tree down, you may cut all around it the roots that are on the surfaces. But so long as the tap root is still firm, forget it. It will still grow. So we have to get this knowledge. We have to grow so that we can stand firm. Let's look at Acts chapter 9. Something about Saul. There is something that happened to Saul. When Saul became a Christian, people were thinking, oh, this man, is he not the new person? But you see that Paul was growing. And because he was growing, he was able to stand. You will also grow. Don't worry. You see, our baby that were born, uh, where is Joanna? When Joanna was born, and the next time I saw Joanna, she was just moving around. I said, whoa, this one is very fast. Well, that is how it is. The next day, you, the next time you see, they will take over the church. You'll be telling, hey, Joanna, stop, stop. You're running all over. I know like we do. Jaden, stop. Favor, hey, this. Some years ago, those ones, Favor, Jaden, what were they? They were just baby. We were just carrying them, helpless. But if they are growing, they are making progress. A time will come, they will be able to stand firm. Nobody is, is going, if they are running, you just tell them to stop because you know now they are growing. Now look at it together with me in Acts chapter 9. I want to read verse number 20. 9, 20, the Bible says, and straightway. This is Paul. He preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name? On this name in Jesus in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. You know what was happening when they saw Paul preaching? They said, Ah, this man who was preaching some time ago, he was the one killing people, catching people who were preaching in that same name, bringing them to Jerusalem. And now he came to Damascus. And the reason why he came to Damascus was to catch those preaching in this name. And to destroy them. You know, they were trying to cast doubt upon Saul. You know, sometimes when you start becoming a believer, and they say, sister, you have joined those people, those church. Ah, those people, their standards are very high. Oh. It's a matter of time. You are coming up. If you are willing to grow, there are things you will leave behind you so that they can help you to grow. Look at verse number 22. But Saul, but Saul, what did he do? He increased in, in the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Jerusalem, proving that this Jesus is very Christ. 
you will increase. The next reason why we have to grow is to be able to serve God effectively. Because if we are babies and we are not matured, we cannot be effective in our service. We don't know how to serve God because we'll be tossed about by every doctrine. When somebody says this, when you watch something on the internet, you jump, you go into it. When somebody says something over there, you jump and you go into it because you are not matured yourself. First Peter chapter 4. I read verse number 10. First Peter 4, verse 10. So these are the reasons why we should grow. So that we can stand. You will stand. And nobody will be able to deceive you. No matter the storms, you will stand. First Peter chapter 4. Let's read verse number 10 and 11. And every man had received the gift. As every man had received the gift. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11. If any man speak, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know what he's saying here? Now verse 11 is very beautiful. He said, if any man is going to talk, let him talk as oracles of God. People that have the word, the mind of God. And he said, if you are going to minister, if you are going to serve God, do it as of the ability God gives. It means that if I can sing, if I can preach, if I can teach, if I can do anything in the house of God, that ability comes from God. It is God that gives me the ability to do it. But if I'm not growing, I cannot do it. You will grow. They say Rome was not built in a day, but it was built anyhow. You understand it? Though it was not built in a day, but by what happened, it was built. You will build your faith. You will serve the Lord. Now the question is, so the, the, we have established the need for the growth. Because if we don't grow, people will toss us about. If we don't grow, we cannot stand firm. If you don't grow, if you remain babies, and every time people have to spoon feed us, oh, you will eat something you don't like. No babies, they don't prepare their own food. Whatever people give to a baby, what do they, they do? What they they consume. Babies could not know whether this is good or bad. They just consume it. Sometimes it creates problem for their tummy. And do you know the problem? Though the things the baby is eating is not good, the baby cannot say no. If you bring the same thing again, what the baby do? Continue. Because it's a baby. But when you have grown and you ate something and you saw that it created, now people say wahala. You see that? It created some problems for your system. Because you are matured, you know that this food, if I eat, it creates problem for me. What do you do? You avoid it. That's the way you would do it. Now, let's look at where we should focus on spiritual growth. So, we say spiritual growth. The question is, we have seen the need that we have to grow. We have seen that it helps us. But where? How? Where do where? Which areas should we grow? So that we know that, hey, we are growing. How will I know? One, the first area is on godly character. Amen. Character. First Timothy 4 verse 7. I will read it. I want to read more scriptures for you. I will be reading them so that you know what we are talking about. First Timothy 4 7 says, But refuse profane and old wise fables, but and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. 
So you begin to see that your character is changing from profanity. At first, we were, we were happy with things that are profane, things that are not, things that, that have no value. But now you are, you are now training your mind, training your soul to godliness, reading the scripture. That is number one. That's how you grow. You see, godly character means that you begin to see God in your character. Why? For godliness with contentment is a great gain. Godliness with contentment is what? It's a great gain. Not everybody will build a house. Not everybody will buy a car. Not everybody will, will get all the things of this world. But in the church, if we believe God, all can be godly. Because that is the will of God for all of us. Godliness. That's why you don't need money to buy it. Jesus paid it all. Exercise yourself. Godly friends. Godly fellowship. The next thing is true discipleship. That is, you avail yourself to learn in Philippians 4 verse 9. You will see it there. True discipleship. That's the way you grow. A disciple is someone who is a learner. And you will see that you avail yourself to learn. Philippians, yes, chapter number 4, verse 9. The Bible says in verse 9, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Number three is the basic Christian routines. What do I call them? That is the things normal Christ everyone should do. Those things you grow in it. Reading your Bible. Praying. Coming for fellowship. You have to be diligent in them. Because maybe at first I was coming to church once in, in a year. It's only 31st night they see me. Now I have to change. Amen. Amen. Fellowship. You are growing in them. If you look at Romans 12, 11, it said, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. The next one is faith and courage. How is that important? I will show you. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, Verse number one. When Timothy became a believer and joined Paul, you will, as a Christian, you will see that sometimes you get into situations that try to shake your faith. Situations that try to doubt, that try to cast doubt on what you have come to believe. Sometimes you come into contact with philosophies that try to even tear apart all the things you have learned. Sometimes you find yourself in an environment that tries to discredit the power of God. In those situations, faith and courage will be necessary. So God told Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. If you have those things that you grow in, you have to grow to the point that it doesn't matter what society says, you believe in your God. That's the way you grow. So in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, and thou, the, and thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Church, be strong in the grace. You have it, but be strong in it. Be strong in the grace. Verse 2, and the thing that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You cannot be a soldier if you don't have courage. One quality of soldiers is that word courage. Every soldier has to be courageous. If not, then you have to leave the army. You have courage. The next thing is that you have to be consistent with your fellowship with God. Consistency with the fellowship with what? With God. You grow in that. Consistent. I will re return to that in the next point, which will be the last point. 
But in Jude, verse 20 and 21, tells us that we should continue. Jude 20, 21 says, and we, no, Jude is ch one chapter, 20 says, be but ye, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And the last thing is, go for more grace. Amen. Go for more gifts. Amen. And go for more skills. What did I say? More grace. More gifts. More skills. Why? Because the grace of God is very important. The Bible said that, and God is able to make all grace. So it means that the grace is not just one. There are many of them. But all grace abound towards you. And if you look at um, the gifts, the Bible said that a man's gifts shall make what? Room for him. Go for more gifts. So you pray for spiritual gifts. And you pray for skills. More skills. The Bible says, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall not be unfruitful. But if you lack them, you are going to be barren. So that's why you are praying. Because maybe at first you have knowledge, but you don't have faith. You pray for more faith. He said, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance and to temperance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity he went on and on and on said patience if these things be in you that's the way you do it you begin to grow from one grace to another the lord will help you you will grow that's why you come to church sometimes you come to church and it's only one thing today i'm praying for more grace in my life you focus on it more grace the next day i'm praying for god to increase my faith your faith will go you will see that if you prayed for headache and it went, next time you move from headache to another level. Amen. We are going to grow. Brethren, the truth is this. If you don't grow, you'll be out of use. That's it. There was a time most of us had a phone which was the best phone in the world. Which phone was that? It was Nokia. But today, I want to ask you how many of you have Nokia? Only one. What happened to Nokia? They didn't grow. And when they see you, I know the, the man was crying. And they asked him, can you tell us what one mistake, what did you do wrong? And he said, we did nothing wrong actually. But the main thing, the reason why we went down, or the one wrong thing we did, was that we did nothing. When all other people, other phones were changing, Nokia did nothing. Because they thought, we have it. My brethren, as a church, if we do nothing about our growth, we can boast in our church. We have the word. Wait. What are we doing with what we have? I will grow. Grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we pray quickly, the nature and exercise of spiritual development. There are two things I want to ask. I want you to bear in mind before we go. One thing is this, growth takes time. Say it to yourself like that. Again, please. Growth takes time. Growth takes time. So give it all the time it needs. Not only that, growth takes attention. Everyone say this after me, please. Yes. You cannot grow by miracle. No, you need to give it attention. See the way mothers give attention to the baby. You cannot say, oh my God, I pray for this baby. Tomorrow, let this baby who is just one month old start walking. That kind of prayer, God will never answer. There are things that you need to give it time and attention. 
Not only that, growth takes a supportive environment. Get into an environment that supports growth. It doesn't matter how good the seed is. If you sow that seed in the wrong soil, in a bad soil, there will be no growth. So the environment is important, brethren. Come to church, let's fellowship together. But not only just church, in the society, in the community, in the workplace, in our schools. The people we connect with, the environment we find ourselves, they will either promote the growth or destroy us. And the third and the fourth and last one is growth takes personal diligence. It will not come by looking on other people. There are things people cannot do for you. There's an adage they say that no matter what you do, nobody can take the medicine for a sick person. Do you understand that? It is the person who is sick that has to still take what? The medication. Because I love my child, I love my husband, I love my wife. Doctor, just inject me for my wife. Is that going to work? Huh. Some some of the people they when they see the serene, uh, the syringe, uh, you know, the injection, ah, they start screaming. Some cannot even look at it. Well, and some are okay, oh, I can take it for my child. Well, if the child has to be immunized. Parents cannot take it for them. There are things we cannot share. Pastors, most of us want pastor pray for me. Can I tell you the secret? If you go to a church where only the pastor prays for you, leave that church. It's a bad church. Do you know why I'm saying so? Because prayer is meant to be made by ourselves. The pastor will become a giant and a Goliath and all of us will become lily poops. Do you understand what I mean? But the place that works is when you and I can pray. Amen. Then we grow. That is what the church is meant to be. So when Jesus was praying, the disciples came and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. They could have said, Jesus, always be praying for us. Eh? Yeah, we know you, when you pray, God answers. Eh? Anything you ask God, God answers. So Jesus, just be praying for us. Well, a day came, he was taken away from them. But did he stop prayer? No, because he taught them. And when the Holy Ghost came, they prayed. Church, the points will come, but I want to summarize this. Growth takes what? Takes time. Growth takes attention. Growth takes a supportive environment. And most importantly, growth takes personal investment and diligence. How should we go about it? So be a humble learner. The things I don't know, teach thou me. Be a learner. Moses got so many things. He said, God, your princess is going with me. That's good. But God, I beseech thee, show me your glory. He was about to, he wanted to learn more of God. Be a humble learner. No matter what we know, we can know more. There is no pastor in this world that is a super guru. God has never done that. Everyone has to learn. No matter what we know, there is still room to know more. Let us be learners. Another thing is we have to plan our growth. As I said, it requires personal diligence. Don't just expect that all of a sudden you will grow. No, plan it. Plan your growth. Let your conscious, your mind be upon it. Let's go to Proverbs 24, 27. I'll be running up very soon because of time. Proverbs 24, 27. The Bible says, prepare thy work without. Are you there with me? Prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field. And afterwards, build thy house. Plan your growth, my brother. What does it mean? Where do you want to grow? What do you want to know? How do you want to grow? What level do you want to go? 
Not only in spiritual things, even in social things. If I don't know how to cook, I have to start learning how to cook because I may need it. I start with spaghetti. Amen? Amen. That's, why is spaghetti simple? You read on the pack, put this one there, put this one, wait for 10 minutes. Is that not a good one? At least when you come to my house, you can get, eat spaghetti. Or in, Indomie noodles. But if you stay only with Indomie, there's a problem. So you move from Indomie to what? Uh, to a goosey. And then to Ogbono. Before you realize you are making a decarico. That is what it means. Start small. Plan the growth bit by bit. The next thing is exercise your skills. This is one area we are so much lacking. If you don't exercise the skills you have, you lose it. Do you, have you learned about faith? What do you do? You exercise the faith. Have you learned about prayer? What do you do? You exercise it. No matter how you teach somebody theory of driving, the best way to drive is to get in front of, I mean, to get in front of the steer and start driving. You can read all the theory about driving. Still, you'll not get the license. Exercise it. So if we want to grow evangelism, preaching, bringing people to church, we can talk about it, but from today, let us exercise. Look at the choristers. They, if they want to sing, you cannot just sing one time. And it's, no, you have to exercise. And I've seen something with choir. It doesn't matter how many years you have been in the choir. If you always want to be on top, you ha always have to. Look at top musicians. Some of them, they, if they are going to perform for one hour, they spend 10, 20, 50 days rehearsing for a performance of just one hour. You know why? Because in that one hour, it defines who they are. They become the icon of the world or some more people push them down. Exercise your skills. Let us exercise. My brother here is a very good footballer. I could see. He loves it. But if they are going to play a match, you know, for 90 minutes, whatever, you know what they do? Training. Training. And they say, but you're only 90. Yes. Training. What they do in that 90 minutes is a result of what they have done days ahead. Brethren, if we are going to be productive this year, let's exercise our skills. And finally, study the word of God. There cannot be anything better than the word of God. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. Please, this Bible, read it. Study along. Join the Bible study. Let's study together. There are things you know that can help the body of Christ. Study. I come back to the statement I made a, couple, a while ago. So I said, remember, because I've said it before. Remember, growth is a systematic process. Be diligent and be what? Be consistent. Bye and bye. You learned one thing today. Said, "Oh, I didn't know this." Okay, I will adapt. You learn one thing. Believers' development. You hear something. Oh, I didn't know. You adapt. You change bit by bit. Before you realize, you'll be flying, and we shall fly together. Let's rise up as we go before God in prayer. I want you to rise up to pray. You have stood. We have been sitting down for quite some time. I want you to pray that this year you will invest in your life. And God will open your eyes to know which areas you need to invest. Pray for everything you need. The grace you need. The strength you need. Everything you need. God has it. This year is a year of spiritual investment. Spiritual growth. This year is a year of greater things. But they will only happen when we look into our lives and begin to invest. So tell the Lord, here am I Lord. Here am I Lord. Deep let me go higher every day. Why, sir, blessed Lord? That's what we sang today as a congregation. Him tell the Lord, I want to go deeper, deeper in knowledge. I want to grow. I refuse to remain like this. I want to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want to grow in grace. I want to grow. Plead with God to help you that today you will grow.
man to go. Lord God, just to grow, to grow everything. Everything we need to grow is in Christ Jesus. The strength to grow, the knowledge to grow, the grace to grow. Let's pray God will help us to invest this year in our personal lives. Physically, spiritually, financially, technically, every aspect of our life, in our families, in our relationships, everywhere. We are going to grow. Things that need to change. Areas we need to correct as we hear, as we hear, we will be growing. Areas we need to adapt. Areas we need to improve. Areas we need to, 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 to actually Create a new thing. God will give us the grace to do that. Growth is here. Say, but grow in grace. Don't stay where you are, my brother. Don't stay where you are, my sister. Grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That grace is here. Pray for yourself a few minutes and then we are gone. Lord, this year I will grow. Lord, I will grow. The, all the areas the Lord has revealed to us to grow. Lord, I will grow this year. In godly character, Lord, I will grow. In true discipleship, I will grow. In faith and courage, I will grow. In grace, in gifts, in skills, Lord, I will grow. In the name of Jesus. Oh, grace, just, I will grow. In the name of Jesus. Grace, grow. 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 In the name of Jesus. Grace, grow. Lord, this year, your growth in my life, I want it to be visible. I will grow in the name of Jesus. I will grow greatly in the mighty name of Jesus. I will grow in the Lord. I will grow in Jesus. Deeper and deeper in the love of Jesus. Lord, daily let me grow. Daily let me grow in the name of Jesus. I pray Lord, grow in the love of in righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray the name of Jesus. Lord, help me the time that I need to grow. Help me, Lord Jesus. I will put in that time. The attention that I need, help me, Lord. I will give you the attention. In the name of Jesus, the personal diligence, Lord. My eyes upon you, help me, Lord. I will be diligent to grow this year. In the name of Jesus. I pray. The supportive environment, Lord, take me into them, Lord. I will grow. In the name of Jesus. Oh, the disposition of growth that I need, oh Lord, give me in the name of Jesus. Humble learner, help me, Lord, this year. I will be humble to learn in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, planning my growth, Lord, help me, Lord Jesus. Nothing will eat up to that plan I have, I have to grow. I will plan my growth. I will be strict in the name of Jesus. The study, the study, the study that I need, the exercising of the ski. Lord, help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, gracious, oh, gracious. The things that I will hear, the things that I will taught this year, Lord, I will go and do them in the the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, walk with me, Lord, to will, to be willing, and to do this year in the name of Jesus. The Lord will walk in us both to will and to do of his commandment. To do and be willing to grow in the name of Jesus. The seed we have to sow. The seed we have to water and nurture. Lord, we will do in the name of Jesus. We will wash great in the Lord this year. In the name of 
Jesus. Tell the Lord, lastly, Lord, as I grow in grace, in every area of my life, I want to grow. I want to grow in the name of Jesus. In personal hygiene, I want to grow. In my career, I want to grow. In my secular knowledge, I want to grow. In every area, Lord, grant me all and grow in the name of Jesus. Oh, gracious, I pray. You are a footballer, Lord, I will grow. You are a trader, Lord, in my business, I will grow. You are an engineer, Lord, I will grow. You are a student, Lord, I will grow. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Lord, we thank you for this visitation you have given to us today. Lord, we receive it, Lord, and the fruit will come forth in Jesus' name. As you have supplicated unto you, Lord, we pray, grant unto us to grow in every area of our life in Jesus' name. We we'll grow in strength, we we'll grow in power, we we'll grow in productivity, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In our soul, in the grace of the Lord, we we'll grow in Jesus' name. We we'll grow in holiness, we we'll grow in righteousness, we we'll grow in faith, we we'll grow in the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us, Lord. Even in this community, we don't want to be the least in Jesus' name. The engineers among us will grow higher in Jesus' name. Our youth and students will grow higher in Jesus' name. The minister you have blessed us with, they will grow higher in Jesus' name. You will cause us to work greater on every side in the name of Jesus. We will become a blessing to our generation and to the church in Jesus' name. We go in this might, Lord. We will grow in your power. We will grow by your might. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Can be seated in God's presence. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.